couple of things that we've learned in this course that are sort of jargony terms. Like, so we, we know what a P is, we know an F, we know uh, an A. And in Excel, we can calculate these things with, with commands. P is just PV for present value. F is FV for future value. And A is PMT for payment. So in the Excel world of calculations, these are built-in functions. So to, to access them, you just start typing in a cell with, um, with a plus sign, and you'll get these pop-ups. And, and let's try right now. So I'm going to do um, the value of P. And I'm going to say the value of P is $92,000. That was our mortgage, number, if you remember correctly. Then I'm going to say our N, our value of our number of periods, was 240. That was the amortization period. And remember, the person who asked, yeah, but what about the term of five years? Term of five years doesn't matter. That's just for how long this these payments will be in place. And at the end of five years, you have to go back and negotiate another, another interest rate. So now let's take an interest rate. And maybe what I'll do inside this cell is I'll actually calculate the value of I the way I should have, which would be one plus uh, 0 0.045. That was our 9% divided by two. And then I'll do to the power of one sixth minus one. 0 0.073631. And the important thing is that inside Excel, the use of present value, the use of future value, and the use of payment exactly correspond to our courses P, F, and A, but they exactly correspond to the patterns of payment that I go on and on about so often, where that first payment is at the end of the first period, and the last payment is at the end of period N. Okay, Someone's actually a little unclear as to why we used to the power of one-sixth so in this formula, we're, we're at, we need to find the interest rate that when it's compounded six times is equal to 4.5%. And that's because we had a 9% nominal rate compounded semi-annually. So we take 9% divide by 2, because it's 9% compounded semi-annually, and then we know it's a 4.5% interest rate every six months. Well, how do I make a 4.5% interest rate when I have when I have to compound every month I have to figure out what rate when it's multiplied by itself 6 times equals 4.5 and the way to do that in this formula is I'll type it in again so you can see it so it's 1 plus 0 0.045 raised to the power of 1/6 which is equivalent to the sixth root. So I take the sixth root of, of that whole thing. That's the calculation. And then to convert it back to a rate, I, I subtract off the one. And that gives me the 0 0.07, 0, 0, It's just math. And, and I would encourage you to sort of review some of the, the stuff on nominal and effective interest rates to really get the hang of it. It's a, it's a reasonable question to ask. Uh, but you're going to have to sort of, you, you'll have to spend some time with, with that idea. Now, getting back to the mortgage, when we're trying to calculate the mortgage payment, we're really calculating an annuity. So, so to answer your question in the chat, this is so that we have an, we're doing that to the power of one six. We're doing this calculation so that we have an interest rate that corresponds to the unit of time that our N is in our n is in months all right our number of periods is in months so our interest rate has to be an effective monthly rate otherwise we can't use the formulas now here we would simply use the a given p formula but in a spreadsheet watch this i'm going to use the payment formula okay so so i'm going to type i'm going to go into the cell i want i'm going to hit the plus sign and then i'm going to type PMT, 
and it's too small for, for you to see, but if you do this in a spreadsheet yourself, you'll see that it prompts me. So Excel says, okay, the first thing I need is the rate. So I just go up here to this cell, and it's highlighting cell C4. You can probably see that, hopefully you can. Then I hit comma, and then it asks me for the number of periods. So I go up to this cell, I hit comma, and now it asks me for the present value. Well, the present value is up here in this cell. I close the brackets, and voila, look at that. 818, I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put a, I'm gonna just go in here and insert a negative sign just so we get a positive number. Oops. There we go. There's our 818.05. Pre-programmed financial calculations. PMT is equal to the A. Future value is equal to F. Present value is equal to P. Let's test it. Let's find, let's see if we can back calculate the P using, this, using the PV formula. So I'm gonna hit the plus sign again, and then I'm gonna type PV in Excel. And if I type PV in Excel and then brackets, it prompts me in that the tiny little uh, text that, that's way too small. It's even small to see on my computer. It's first thing it says, what's the rate? So I go back up and I highlight the interest rate. And then it says, number of periods. And I go back up to the number of periods, which are which is 240. Um, and then it says, what's the payment? And I'm gonna put a negative sign here. Let's see if I can do that. And I'm gonna say the payments are 818.05. And voila, look at that. Gives me exactly $92,000, my original P. What do you think the future value would be of this mortgage. And this, this gets back to a question that someone asked last week. And remember in the slides when we had to calculate how much, a more, how much mortgage was still owing at the end of the first five-year term. And I did that trick where I pretend you didn't make any payments and the original mortgage amount just grows for five years. And then we subtract the future five-year amount the annuity of all the payments, and we ended up with what's owing, and someone said, why does that work? Because it seems like it shouldn't. Well, if we take the future value of the 92,000 at the end of 240 periods, and we subtract the future value of all of these payments for 240, it should come out to zero. Right? I, I don't. I haven't done this before. This is a bit of a gamble in here, but let, let's try this. So I'm going to say FV, meaning the future value, and the future value of, uh, it asked me for the rate, the future value, here's the rate, and then it asked me for the number of periods. So the future value at the end of the amortization period, and it says, what is the payment? Well, I'm going to skip the payment, and I can skip the payment portion by just hitting comma again. And then it, and then it asks me what's the present value, and then I'm going to use the 92,000 as the present value, and we'll get a future value of this. Now, I'm also just going to change the sign. So the way Excel works, it usually gives you a cash flow diagram that's that has an end result, whether it's a P or an F, that's the opposite sign to the one that you're using. So you don't be don't be too thrown off by that. You can fix it by just putting a negative uh, in front of some portion. Let, let me just try it. Let me see now if I can if I can come back up here. Well, maybe I'll do it in a cell below. If I find the future value of all of the mortgage payments, I'll put the negative in there preemptively. I'll do I'll find the rate. And then I sure hope this works. Then the number of periods, which is 240. So someone said, so when we skip payment, it assumed there are no payments. Yeah, no payments. Yeah, that 535, that's no payments for the entire, what is it, 20 years of the mortgage. So if you didn't make any mortgage payments, your $92,000 mortgage would be 535,000. That's a lot. 
So, and now the future value of all of these payments, let's see what we get. Look at that, boom. So these two formulas, what I've highlighted here, this, this cell is the future value of 240 payments of 818.05. And this cell is the future value of 92,000, where there's, when you don't make any payments, you just charge this interest rate right here for 240 periods and they come out to the same same value. So the person who asked the question last week, maybe this helps understand why that trick that we showed in the slides for calculating how much is owed at the end of the term, maybe this helps understand, um, you know, because if you, you take out the 92,000 and then you let interest accumulate unfettered, making no payments, and yeah, there's interest on the interest in the whole bit, but the same offsetting amount is actually happening in the annuity of the payments. So, and, and this is kind of proof of it, that these two value, this is completely different formulas in these two cells. You know, this, this cell is a future value of an annuity, and this cell is a future value of a present value, and they come out to exactly the same thing. Okay, so, and if I subtracted the two, I would get a value of zero, meaning the mortgage is completely gone at the end of 240 months. So I wanted to make sure that I, I dedicated a little bit of time to show you how Excel works for financial calculations. Oh, someone has asked the question here, but in reality, the person is, so this, is a, this is just a private question to me. So someone's at, someone said, but in reality, the person is paying 196,332 at the end of the five year term. Uh, I don't know. L let's let's check it out. I could just go in and modify this formula where here I've taken the future value of 92,000 after 240 months, but I could easily change that to uh, the future value. What's it? That's uh, FC3. I think I can just put a number in here of 60 months. Okay, so, so after 60 months, 92,000 growing uncontrollably, not making any payments, the value is 142,000. And then if we say, what's the future value of 60 payments? So I can find the future value of 60 payments in here. That's 61,000. And then I can just subtract these two. So the amount owing at the end of the five-year term would be 81,437. So that I'll put here, owing after 60 months, and this is on the value of P. And then here we could say that this is the future value at T equal to 60 of the payments and then subtracting the two this is the amount still owed at a t equals 60 and you know this is maybe a little bit counterintuitive but it is absolutely by far the easiest way to calculate how much money is still owed at the end of in this case a five-year term on a mortgage that starts out at 92,000. Just to recap, 92,000 is, is the mortgage at T equal to zero. If we let that grow for five years, that's 60 months, it grows to 142,873. But we know that we're making these payments. We calculated those payments using 240 months because we used the full amortization. So, but we know that we're actually gonna make this dollar amount payment we can take an annuity of 8.1805 for 60 months, and at the end of those 60 months in the future, um, the future value of those 60 payments of 8.18 will be 61,000. So this is what is owed. This is what we've paid. This is what is still owed. 
And this is staying true to the principles of the time value of money, where 142,873, that is a value at time t equal to 60. 61,436, that is a value at time t equal to 60. So I can subtract one of those values from the other. 